Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the great pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Shipman. How are you today, Matt? I am good. I'm top 10 today, Brian, I think. I don't know, maybe 11. I don't know. But one of my favorite shows when we do our Derby and Oaks contender top 10 lists. Yeah, Matt. Well, hey, we're less than four months out now. That's going to fly by and uh, thought it would be a good time. A little bit slow on the uh, graded stakes front this weekend. So we thought it'd be a good time to bust out not only our top 10 for the Derby early in 2024, but also for the Kentucky Oaks. Give the Phillies their love as well. Matt, you ready to roll? I am ready. Let's do it, B. Let's pop up the Derby first, Matt. And we see a lot of Breeders' Cup horses here uh, early in the year. There are a few horses, uh, several horses, that though have, were not in the Breeders' Cup and are starting to make themselves known late in the two-year-old season or even early in the three-year-old season. Let's start at the top, Matt. Fierceness, no surprise that the uh, City of Light uh, cult uh, out of a, a state thirsty mare, a... Uh, Rapoli homebred leads the way after his big win in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. Yeah, no question about it. Uh, uh, fierceness was not only the Breeders' Cup Juvenile winner, but was a very, very impressive uh, winner visually on the track, winning by a big margin, and also getting a very, very high speed figure as he bounced back from that uh, poor performance in the Champagne. Yeah, and at the time we said uh, we didn't think there was a better two-year-old debut uh, last year than what Fierceness did at Saratoga, running off by over 11 lengths. Uh, of course, he showed some vulnerability. He uh, kind of lunged at the start in a sloppy track uh, in the grade one champagne and did nothing that day, but he certainly bounced back with that six and a quarter length win at Santa Anita, three different tracks. Uh, we also see that he's working now in South Florida, and we know Mike Rapoli, uh, this horse trained by Todd Pletcher, his most usual trainer, although he's branching out a little bit. We, we know Rapoli wants to win a derby badly. All right, yeah, that number two. Go ahead. Yeah, that's for sure, Brian. You know, I, I, I think so, there would there are plenty of detractors out there for fierceness saying, oh, yeah, this is just like Forte last year, Pletcher, Rapoli. Uh, winner of the Breeders' Cup uh, Juvenile. Well, uh, um, that that certainly is similar, but hopefully Fierceness won't have the bad luck that Forte ran into as the year went on. Yeah, I, I, if he's another Forte, I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing. Forte was a very good horse. Like he said, he ran into some bad luck uh, last year. We'll see. Fierceness, though, off that Breeders' Cup Juvenile. He's our number one. And it's good to see that uh, uh, Pletcher's horse is fierceness. And uh, another one we're going to talk about soon is working already this year. All right, number two on the list, Matt, is Muth. Muth, a son of good magic, a, uh, a, a real hot uh, second crop sire. Good magic, of course, was a champion himself. This is a Bob Baffert runner, and we've seen him now in four graded stakes races. Yes, absolutely, Brian. And, and Muth is not only working. He's already run this year, was a, a clear winner last weekend of the uh, of the Sa San Vicente going seven furlongs. And if you watch the show, Brian and I, uh, Brian and I talked about that. You mentioned, Brian, the sire, Good Magic. Good Magic is one of three sires on our top 10 list that is represented by two horses. Yeah, good magic, uh, certainly off to a great start. And, of course, he won the Kentucky Derby as a sire last year with Mage uh, Muth. Yeah, say what you will about the fact that he won at seven furlongs, but he's been two turns. He's a grade one winner at two turns. Of course, there's the Baffert situation. Will he be transferred to another trainer in time to run in the Kentucky Derby, or will he be more of a Preakness horse? We'll find out. But the, the fact that he already has a win this year, I think, is a feather in the cap of Muth as we're looking at this list of horses who are still largely unproven. Now, number three, I guess, is unproven locked, although he is a great one winner. That happened at Keeneland, and he did run four, what I think are four good races last year as a juvenile. 
yeah, he was a winner of the Breeders' Futurity at uh, Keeneland and then ran third uh, in the Breeders' Cup uh, Juvenile behind Fierceness and Muth. Uh, um, we actually, Brian, on our list have the our top three is the same top three that you that readers of Horse Racing Nation can see on the website's uh, rankings of contenders for the Kentucky Derby. Yeah, they're also the top three from the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, and that has not generally worked out as we look into the Kentucky Derby. Uh, but I, I think last year's Breeders' Cup Juvenile was a pretty strong field top to bottom, and uh, these horses all have a lot to like, including Locke, who in his two losses, he really finished well uh, in that debut performance. When he rallied for third, he was really running. And in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, if you look at it, he was running well down the stretch, the son of gun runner. Matt, he was a $425,000 yearling. He has distance on both sides as out of a Malibu moon mare. Locked is a horse who, like fierceness, is working down in South Florida. Number five, number four on the list, Matt, more unproven than the top three probably. But uh, Nice Host has been pretty spectacular in only two starts. This is another Baffert. We have two Bafferts on the list right now. This is another one. The son of Nyquist is two for two. Two different tracks at, in Southern California, and he is also working uh, uh, as we speak, or not as we speak, but he's currently working out. So nice Nysos, I think we could expect to see again soon for his third career start. Yeah, working steadily uh, uh, for uh, for Mr. Baffert. Uh, Nysos is by the sire uh, Nyquist, the Kentucky Derby winner from uh, not too many years not too many years ago. Nyquist is another one of those horses that I mentioned that has two on the, uh, on our top 10 list, along with Gunrunner, who was the sire of Locked. Yeah, yeah, cer certain sires we see over and over again here on this Derby Trail, and, and Nyquist is uh, certainly one of them. Matt, he won his maiden in 108 and change by more than 10 lengths, and then in the seven furlong grade three, Bob Hope, he won by nearly nine lengths, effortless so far. He'll need to stretch out. He'll need to face better, bigger fields. But so far, so good, of course, for, for Nysos. Number three, uh, uh, number five on our list, Matt, I think is a horse that uh, a lot of people might not have so high. But Honor Marie, we've been impressed with uh, the son of Honor Code uh, rallying in all of his races. He's only been beaten by one horse, and he's doing it at Churchill Down so far. Now he's gone to fairgrounds to winter. Yep, absolutely. For uh, trainer uh, Whit Beckman, who I think, Brian, is a former Chad Brown assistant, uh, if I'm correct. Uh, um, yeah, Honor Marie won the Kentucky Jockey Club grade two. Uh, and, and, and hey, it's hard to knock it when you're three for three running under the Twin Spires. Yeah, yeah, not quite three for three. He oh, yeah, did right. uh, uh, get beat. Yeah, he did get beaten that second start, which was an allowance. But he made up a lot of ground on a track that was uh, less than uh, uh, good. It was a slappy track that day at Churchill Downs, and the horses that were first and third have come back well in stakes races. It, of course, the winner Otto the Conqueror became a stakes winner down at Remington Park in the Springboard Mile. So Honor Marie three big rallies to win his debut, second in a sloppy allowance and then to win that Kentucky Jockey Club. It would be easy to say that he was the best horse at Churchill Downs, the best two-year-old at Churchill Downs in the fall, uh, Matt, but still very much under the radar, as you say, for trainer Whit Beckman. Uh, number six, uh, and this was a horse, uh, you know, a lot of people are loving. I had him higher on my list than you did, actually. Doorknock, Doorknock there's that sire again, good magic, but of course we know that there's more to the breeding of Doorknock than just the sire. Yeah, that's for sure. Dornock uh, was a winner of the Remsen Stakes at uh, Aqueduct in December. He won that race uh, by a nose. This, I think, is one of these horses that we have on the list that uh, uh, has a good bit of upside. Uh, I don't, I don't think it's anything to worry about. He has not uh, posted a workout since that Remsen, but we're only talking about a month since then. Yeah, yeah, that Remsen was late in the year. It was uh, early December this year. So 
certainly not long ago. And the two horses out of the Remsen that we have on our list haven't returned to the work pad yet, but certainly very promising horses. An interesting Remsen because Doorknock came back again after Sierra Leone looked like a, uh, a certain winner in, in mid-stretch, but Doorknock showed a toughness to fight back. Nine furlongs over that aqueduct track. Of course, Doorknock is the full brother to Mage. Interestingly, Matt, he sold as a yearling for 325000 so people liked him uh, long before we knew what Mage would become. I uh, would have sold for a lot more if uh, that sale had come after last year's Kentucky Derby won by his full brother, Mage. Number seven is a horse I want to see more of. Uh, Knightsbridge has not returned to the work tab since a uh, just an overpowering win uh, at Churchill Downs. And it's been a few months since he got steady during the race, and then he just exploded to win off by more than 10. Yeah, more than 10 lengths, Brian. Ultra impressive. This is a Godolphin runner, and, and they had, you know, uh, such a fantastic year last year uh, uh, as they have uh, with so many, so many well-bred horses, uh, Sierra Leone, another gun runner, uh, sorry, uh, Knight, Knightsbridge, another uh, Nyquist in this field. Yeah, the second Nyquist on the list, uh, like I said, ultra impressive, but uh, we haven't seen him return. Bill Mott doesn't rush his horses, uh, so uh, hopefully we'll see Knightbridge return to the uh, uh, workout cycle soon. He is a, out of a Bernardini mare, Matt, and Bernardini broodmares is the most common broodmare that we see on our two top 10 lists here for the Kentucky Derby and the Kentucky Oaks. An interesting thing if you're uh, looking uh, looking at Bernardini as the broodmare sire of a lot of these promising young horses. Number eight, we talked about a little bit already, Son of Gunrunner, there's Sierra Leone. I like this horse, Matt. Um, it, it, you know, I'm not saying much in saying that I like this horse. He was a $2.3 million yearling purchase. So the most expensive horse we're going to talk about today, the son of gun runner, uh, was a, I guess you could ca call him a facile maiden winner uh, at, at uh, Aqueduct when he debuted. Uh, a few months ago, but then came back with an interesting run in the Remsen. Yeah, an interesting run uh, uh, for a horse with only that one win coming up uh, just a nose short in that uh, in that Remsen, uh, as we mentioned, a son of a uh, gun runner. And this is the only Chad Brown trainee that we have on our top 10. So far, Matt, so far. I'm sure there'll be more Chad Browns that we talk about on this Kentucky Derby trail. Uh, it, you know what? Uh, everybody was talking about Doorknock after the Remsen, and, and I get it. He, he looked beat, fought back, came back, and got the win in that nine for a long Remsen. But Doorknock had three races under his belt, including a, a big win at Keeneland coming in. Sierra Leone only had one race at Aqueduct. It wasn't overly impressive. It was a win. He did what he had to do to win there. He made a big move in that Remsen, and then you said short. I think he came up a little short in the nine for a long Remsen in his second career start. I, I think that's a horse who is bound to improve off that effort. But just like Doorknock, we haven't seen him back yet, although it's only been about five weeks or so since that uh, effort in the Remsen. Number nine, uh, a horse that uh, I think a lot of people can question why he we have him on the top ten when so many interesting young three-year-olds are not did not make it on our top 10. But Air of Defiance is a horse we both have liked a little bit. A quality road out of a ghost after mare. And there's that trainer uh, that we seem to be talking about so much the last three, four, five years, Brad Cox. Yes, and, and, and a son of quality road. And hey, Brian, this is one thing that you and I like to do on our top 10 list at this point in the year. We want to put in some of these horses that only have a maiden special weight victory and impressive one and impressive ones to their credit. And that certainly is a uh, 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 art of defiance trained by Brad Cox. Uh, the only Brad Cox that we have on our list right now, although he has already won uh, on the Kentucky Derby trail uh, uh, a few times this year. Uh, it's another horse that is owned by Al Gold's Gold Square Stable. And the last couple of years, uh, that combination of Gold Square and Cox has uh, done pretty well on the Derby Trail. 
Yeah, yeah, this is an interesting horse. Uh, I like the breeding uh, ghost stopper mare for this uh, uh, quality road son. And uh, he, of course, he ran into fierceness in his debut. He was second. He was second by a ways, but he uh, got up for second in his debut at Saratoga. And then a, a really nice win at Keeneland going seven furlongs. He hasn't been farther than seven furlongs yet, but the breeding says that won't be too much of a problem. Last but not least, least on our list, Matt Carbone. I have my doubts. I really have my doubts, especially as I said, when there were so many good horses that we left off this list. Uh, Carbone is a son of Matoli. Matoli was a sprint champion recently. Carbone can't get a mile and a quarter. Can he, Matt? I don't know. Uh, um, I probably after the uh, his maiden special weight win, which came in no November, uh, uh, felt that way. But he came back in an allowance race, going a mile, uh, winning clearly by four lengths. So maybe I feel a little bit less like that uh, than I did before. And that mile was at uh, Oaklawn Park for Steve Asmussen, who was still looking for that elusive Kentucky Derby victory. Yeah, you know, I, I I'm skeptical of a Matoli on a Kentucky Derby list, but I'm uh, I'm willing, especially since we've seen some uh, sires over the years that we thought wouldn't produce a ten furlong Kentucky Derby winner, do it. Carbone, he won his maiden uh, maiden race, a sprint at Churchill by six uh, by eight lengths, and then that race at Oaklawn, which happened just uh, just a week ago or so, uh, New Year's Eve. That's a two-turn race, and he won by four. Maybe not as impressively as the six far long race, but uh, a four-length easy win going two turns at Oaklawn Park. He is out of a street sense mare, so uh, uh, maybe there are things to, 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 to tip us off that Carbone might be able to uh, at least run some very good derby prep races here and uh, see if he's the real deal on the way to the Kentucky Derby. Like I said, so many good horses we left off the list, but hey, we narrowed it down to 10. That was not easy. That's what we did for you. We hope you like the list. Tell us all those horses that we should have had. The Wine Steward. Wine Steward is, is one horse that, that I like and uh, didn't quite make the consensus top 10 here, Matt. While we're talking derby, before we start with the Oaks, let's uh, just take a look at the prep races coming. These will all be uh, uh, 20 points to the winner, Matt. And uh, we're going to see a bunch of the horses we talked about a lot of bigger preps coming. We've kind of gotten through the wave of maybe lesser preps after the uh, uh, Breeders' Cup, but we got uh, races from New Orleans, Oaklawn, South Florida, Southern California, New York, and even Tampa Bay Downs coming in the next few weeks. So a lot to look forward to, Matt. And if I'm not mistaken, those are all two-turn races. Yeah, I mean, it's starting to get a little bit more serious uh, as the point values are going up. And and uh, before we know it, we'll be at the 50s and the 100s. And, and it, it's going to start getting real in the next month or so. Yeah, we see that LeCompte at Fairgrounds, and they're expecting a pretty good field uh, in just over a week. So, of course, we'll be talking uh, uh, Fairgrounds and the LeCompte next, uh, next week on uh, – on uh, horse center and that is something to look forward to let's talk phillies though matt top 10 this is a little tougher i think because well for a lot of reasons we know all the good three-year-old males that are healthy want to make it to the kentucky derby the kentucky oaks is the biggest three-year-old philly race of the year i think it, it, if that wasn't true uh 30 years ago it certainly has become true in more uh, recent years. So it, it's a huge race for the three-year-old Phillies, the sister race of the Kentucky Derby. And um, a lot of the Phillies we're going to talk about here have not come back yet on the work tab. They, they're, you know, they're looking at a nine furlong race. They're looking at a little smaller field, a big field, but a smaller field than the 20 in the Kentucky Derby map. Um, so uh, it, it, it probably is a, 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 a a thing where we're only going to see one or two preps for a lot of these Phillies. But without further ado, I'll stop talking and we'll get to a Kentucky Derby Oaks top 10 list. Hey, we got pink. I like that, Matt, where we've gone pink for the Kentucky Oaks. And once again, we're talking about the Breeders' Cup winner. This one is an undefeated Breeders' Cup winner, just FYI. 
Yeah, and, and right, that's a lot of information, FYI, uh, that we can share about, about this daughter of Justify from the barn of uh, Bill Mott, who had such a great year. And I don't know, Brian, who may be the Eclipse Award winner this year based on all those uh, big race victories. Justify broke her maiden at Saratoga, came back and won the grade one frisette, and then on to the Breeders' Cup, getting better and better in all three starts. So three wins, two grade ones, pretty easy to put uh, in the number one spot. One of those horses that you mentioned that hasn't worked yet. Actually, the top three on our list, Brian, have yet to work out this uh, since their last starts. Yeah, yeah, although uh, I guess Intricate has run a little bit more recently than the top two, but that's true. And, and like I said, less less work to do, less prepping to do for the Kentucky Oaks than the males have to do for the Kentucky Derby. Just, with, just FYI, this filly has not been overly impressive to me in any of her three wins. But you look at some of the facts here, Matt, uh, she's won at three different tracks. She's won at different distances. She's won at different on different track conditions. She's won two grade ones already. There's a lot to like. This is a George Krikorian homebred, and, and we've seen Krikorian have a lot of success lately in recent years. And uh, give your horse to, to Bill Mott, and, and you're probably going to be in good stead. Uh, this is also a filly out of, uh, as we said, Justify, another one of the hot uh, second-year sires, just like uh, uh, Good magic, justify, of course, a triple crown winner. She's also out of a street crime there. So uh, nine furlongs shouldn't be a problem for the two-year-old Philly, soon to be two-year-old Philly champion, just FYI. Number two is a horse that she beat last time at Santa Anita in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. Uh, but uh, Candied, uh, three races for trainer Todd Pletcher. She's done little wrong, and she's also a grade one winner. Matt. Yeah, absolutely, Brian, a grade one winner in the uh, Alcibiades, uh, uh, and uh, that came after her maiden special weight win, which was at Saratoga, another one with uh, plenty of breeding to handle the mile and an eighth. Yeah, absolutely. The daughter of uh, Candy Ride looks like a real, uh, a real horse to watch uh, going forward. All three of her, I could say a lot of the same things that I did about just FYI. She's done it at different tracks. She's a grade one winner. She's run well each time. Uh, Candied certainly a, a filly that makes a lot of sense to have on this list for trainer Todd Fletcher. Number three was a filly that I wanted to put number one on my personal list, Matt. I, I ended up putting just FYI number one on my list, but Intricate was number two on my list. A, a daughter of Gunrunner trained by Brendan Walsh. Intricate is a... Uh, uh, out of a distorted humor mare match. She didn't do a whole lot in her first start, but her last two have been good. They've been around two turns. Very impressed with her race over the track, winning the golden rod easily. Yep, and that maiden win came at uh, Keeneland. Intricate is a daughter of Gunrunner, and once again, Gunrunner is the leading sire on this Kentucky Oaks list. The only stallion that we have in our top 10 with more than one win. Gunrunner's got two in this uh, list. Yeah, good point, Matt. Gunrunner's certainly one of the best sires in the country, one of the best young sires in the country. Intricate, a beautiful chestnut filly out of Gunrunner and a real big winner of the Golden Rod over the Churchill Downs track uh, late last fall. Number four on our list, uh, a lot to prove. I, I guess we could... Um, certainly make comparisons between the number four horses on both of these lists. Copian, though, has not been quite as impressive as Nysos, but Copian uh, has done what she's asked. She's done it easily. This one's trained by Richard Mandela. She's a daughter of Omaha Beach. Yeah, uh, a nice uh, maiden victory at Del Mar, uh, which was followed up by a grade two win in the Santa Inez, by almost six lengths, Brian. So, you know, uh, uh, this uh, filly's been impressive uh, in her own right. Richard Mandela actually has two on our list. 
Yeah, that's interesting. And uh, they're both interesting fillies. And Copion is uh, out of a victory gallop mare, which we, you don't see a whole lot anymore. But that uh, that tells me there's some distance capability for this uh, filly who's only spreaded so far. Six and a half furlongs at Del Mar, seven furlongs at Santa Anita. She did it effortlessly. I really don't think she beat much, including that graded stakes last time. So we'll have to see. But uh, it looks like Mandela has another good one here. Uh, number five is a filly who gets very little respect, Matt, and she got very little respect on Breeders' Cup Day. But I tell you what, Jody's Pride ran a heck of a race in that Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies. She sure did. Jody's Pride is a daughter of American Pharaoh. Uh, um, boy, we don't talk as much about the uh, uh, offspring of American Pharaoh as we did uh, a number of years ago. But it, so uh, it's uh, another good horse by that Triple Crown winning uh, 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 sire. This one is trained by Jorge Abreu, uh, another former assistant of Chad Brown. Um, and before the, the second in the Breeders' Cup, she was a winner of the Matron uh, at Aqueduct in the Belmont at Aqueduct meeting and broke her maiden at Saratoga. Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure, quite sure why she doesn't get any respect. She's out of a scout daddy mare. And as you said, she uh, she won her maiden race easily. It was a five and a half furlong race at Saratoga. Uh, the matron, we should note, was a race that was scheduled for the turf. And of course, that's only six furlongs. So it was uh, one of those stakes races taken off the grass. Again, she did it easily. And having never been more than six furlongs, she was finishing well. She was uh, certainly gaining on just FYI when just FYI won that Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies by a neck. Uh, Jody's probably another one who hasn't made it back to the work tab since the Breeders' Cup, but to offer three races, there's there's a lot to like for Jody's pride, number five. Number six, Matt, is life talk. This is the first Pletcher Philly that we see on our list, and, and life talk is one of the more experienced Phillies in, in the field. Uh, Life Talk is one of those out of a Bernardini mare, a $335,000 yearling purchase for owner Mike Rapoli. And, and Life Talk um, never looked like a champion, uh, at least in her first four races, Matt, as she uh, kind of improved slowly. Uh, but she ran a good race in the Breeders' Cup, fourth in a big field, not beaten all that much by just FYI. And I like what she did last time since the Breeders' Cup. Yeah, since the Breeders' Cup, uh, she's been able to become a graded stakes winner of the Demoiselle at uh, at Aqueduct. Uh, this is the other gun runner uh, in the field, and and you know, seems like uh, uh, the Pletcher Rapoli uh, combination has been so well represented in these uh, in these big races. Yeah, Life Talk getting a win at the distance. That's the only filly on the field that can say that. Nine furlong Demoiselle did it easily. Not sure how big the horses she beat were, but uh, Life Talk with that win after the Breeders' Cup on the other side of the country, coming back to New York, that's a good sign for Life Talk heading into 2024. Matt, number seven on our list uh, is, um, uh, uh, you know, it, Tamara was a heavy favorite in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies after two huge wins at Delmar. Yeah. She's she's a, a daughter of Beholder, a, a daughter of Bolt Doro, but of course her mare is uh, the great Beholder. So, you know, everybody wants to see Tamara succeed and what she looked like in winning her debut at Delmar and then uh, the Delmar debutante. Uh, she looked like the real deal. She headed into the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies, was a heavy favorite, didn't run much at all. She was close early, and she backed out to finish uh, seventh in that Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies. But she came out of the race with an injury. Uh, we'll see. I mean, there's a lot to like. There's a lot to worry about if we're talking Kentucky Oaks because she, uh, you know, hasn't been back, obviously, since the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. Mandela said it was a minor injury. She'd only be out a few months. Um, tomorrow could be any kind still, though. Yeah, I agree with that, Brian. Uh, not only the the Bolt Doro and the and the Beholder, but what we saw from her in those first two races, we got to give her another chance to to come back big. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the the injury probably had something to do with it. To me, she never looked comfortable 
uh, chasing a fast pace early in that Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies. And then we found out that she had an injury. So certainly, like Matt said, let's give her another chance. She retains a spot. Questionable whether she'll be ready for the Kentucky Oaks in less than four months. Number eight, Alpine Princess. Here's a horse for Brad Cox, Matt. And here's a horse who's got a nice recent stakes win. Yeah, and and a lot of races in already. Five races um, with three fi- three victories. Most recently uh, in the Untappable at Fairgrounds, and uh, before that with an allowance win at Churchill Downs. Her maiden victory was at Saratoga. Uh, in between, in there, she was a a little bit of a head scratching finish when she was seventh in the uh, Alcibiades. Yeah, she did not have a good trip. Uh, She did not have a good trip at Keeneland in that grade one Alcibiades uh, mount. So I I think there is at least a little bit of excuse, but I think part of it too is that she's getting better with every start. She looked good winning that Churchill Downs allowance race after her failure at Keeneland. And and then she proved it at Fairgrounds, uh, winning that untappable over some decent fillies. She looked good. She's a, a, a filly certainly likely to like a distance, uh, being a daughter of classic empire out of a curling mare. Number nine is uh, the first filly we're talking about from trainer Bob Baffert. Will she be? Uh, will she make the field for the Kentucky Oaks? Only, only if she transfers to another uh, another trainer. But the daughter of Malibu Moon, after a She's not a typical Baffert. She wasn't a real expensive purchase. As she didn't come out with a lot of precociousness, uh, losing her first three, but she's been good in her last three. Yeah, last three. Three uh, three wins. So another horse uh, with a lot of races for uh, as a two-year-old these days with six starts. Uh, uh, she, came, she won the Starlet, a grade two, most recently at Los Alamitos, where uh, Baffert uh, wins those two-year-old races so, so often. But before that was a winner of uh, a more minor stake, the Desi Arnaz at uh, Del Mar, and was a maiden special weight winner at Santa Anita. Well, you just mentioned three wins at three tracks in her last three starts. That Starlet win uh, around two turns, of course, and she did it by more than five lengths. Uh, say what you will about the cal- the depth of quality among the California horses right now, but nothing like you is certainly improving and looking better and better all the time. Number 10 on our list, Matt. Uh, again, we left off a lot of good fillies. This was the last one we got in, even though she hasn't broke through in a stakes race yet. I think Central Avenue is destined to be a stakes winner for trainer Michael Stidham. Yeah, she's got that good Godolphin breeding that we were talking about uh, on the boys' side, a daughter of Street Sense. So uh, uh, this one can only get better. Was a debut winner uh, of her maiden special weight at Colonial Downs and uh, uh, has hit the board in two big stakes second. Uh, in the grade one frisette and third in the golden rod. Yeah, I think she's a filly that's going to get better, the daughter of Street Sense. And for her to run second in the frisette and her second career start off only a maiden at Colonial, I think was a little bit of a feather in her cap. She did have some a little bit of trouble in that third place finish uh, behind Intricate in the golden rod last year, uh, last fall. So something to watch uh, for this Go Dolphin homebred. Matt, just like we did with the males, let's take a quick look. This is becoming a long show, so we'll we'll make it a quick look at the Kentucky Oaks preps coming up. Uh, looks like we got one this weekend. Yeah, this weekend we've got the Bisanda at uh, Aqueduct uh, and an opportunity for some of these now three-year-old fillies to go that nine for a long distance. Yeah, that, that mirrors the Jerome one week lo- later, won by drum roll, please, for trainer Brad Cox. And then a lot of these other races are kind of sister races to male races that we saw on the male preps for the Kentucky Derby. Folks, I I hope you enjoyed our look at our top 10, our current top 10. It's sure to change quite a bit in the next few months, but that's the the nature of the beast. Matt and I did our best to uh, uh, find our favorite uh, 10 for each gender as we uh, approach the Kentucky Derby, Kentucky Oaks. We hope you enjoyed it. Matt, let me get a parting shot from you, my friend. 
yeah, hey, Brian, you and I are willing to take a shot on these top 10 lists early in the year. We did them last year. We're doing them in January. So uh, it's a good resource for uh, uh, fans of these uh, big races that first weekend in May. And certainly, as always, I want to thank you guys for watching the show. Yeah, thanks to everybody for watching. We appreciate that you tune in every week. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the Horse Racing Nation channel here on YouTube and turn on those notifications. Leave them out in the eye a comment. We appreciate it greatly. Thanks to Candace Curtis for Race Graphics. Derby Wars, the best contest site out there is our sponsor. And we didn't use any pace projections this week, but we'll thank Timeform US because we do most other weeks. Folks, we'll see you next week. We know we'll be talking New Orleans stakes races the LeCompte leading the way next week right here on Horse Center. Until then, have a wonderful week.